Luxemithonia was developed from Carraro, which is mostly prepared by soaking the bark of a viny jungle plant called Stripnose toxifora to extract the active excipient. Curare is an arrow poison that was used by a tribe in Venezuela to paralyze wild animals when hunting. Due to the fact that curare has almost zero oral availability, they did not end up poisoning themselves when eating the poisoned meat. As curare is made up of multiple components, the next step was to extract and purify individual excipients for neuromuscular blocking agents. Harold King was an organic chemist working for the National Institute of Medical Research, who discovered d tubocurarane in 1935. He isolated the compound as well as determining the structure that we can see here. As you can see, the two quaternary ammonium groups at opposite ends are structurally related to acetylcholine, where positive nitrogen atoms are attracted to the alpha subunits of the postsynaptic nicotinic receptors, which we will explore later in this video. Eventually, decamethonium was found to be a valuable depolarizing agent, which acts as an agonist at acetylcholine receptors. Here we can see the structure of decamethonium again, with the same quaternary ammonium groups and its similarity to acetylcholine. This was then developed into succinylcholine, also referred to as succinylcholine, making it a dimer of acetylcholine bonded through an alpha carbon atom. The two ester groups extend the conformation. It also has an increased ability to be hydrolyzed, making it appropriate for the action as a rapid inductor for neuromuscular blockade, also allowing a short duration when required. The reason decamethonium and succinylcholine work so well as depolarizing agents is due to the fact that they are structurally related to acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter that is related to motor and memory function and is found in the CNS and in the PNS. Cholinesterase enzymes work by base promoted hydrolysis mechanisms. This involves water present in the body to act as a nucleophile and attacks the carbonyl of the ester to produce a tetrahedral intermediate. The tetrahedral intermediate then decomposes producing carboxylic acid and an alkoxide, which is a very strong base. This then attacks the OH group of the carboxylic acid and a proton transfer occurs, producing a carboxylate salt and an alcohol, and in this case would be succinate and choline. After succinylcholine was synthesized in the 1940s, it was clinically tested in the early 1950s and selectively tried on patients and was found to be successful. There are two types of acetylcholine receptors, nicotinic and muscarinic. For the purposes of succinylcholine, we'll be looking at nicotinic receptors. Nicotinic receptors are ligand gated channels that form pores in the cell's postsynaptic membrane and are involved in the mediation of the fast synaptic transmission at the synapse. Usually, acetylcholine is released and diffuses across the synaptic cleft and attaches to acetylcholine receptors on the sacroclema, which initiates an action potential. This action potential then causes calcium to be released from the sacroplasmic reticulum, which causes contraction whereby myosin cross bridges alternately attach to actin and detach, releasing energy by ATP hydrolysis. The action potential then ends and calcium is put back into the sacroplasmic reticulum. The muscle then returns to a relaxed state. Succinylcholine is a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker that is used to produce muscle relaxation. It specifically targets the nicotinic receptors and acts by mimicking acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. It binds to the postsynaptic nicotinic receptors, activating and opening ion channels which cause depolarization and contraction. It is a partial agonist to ACH receptors. The main structure activity relationship component in succinylcholine is its two quaternary ammonium groups which are separated by 10 carbon units. This obeys a general requirement for effective neuromuscular blockade potency. As you can see, there are two alpha subunits within the ACH receptor. These are the sites where succinylcholine binds using its quaternary ammonium groups. Once this happens, the ligand gated channels open, depolarization occurs, and the threshold potential is reached. The voltage gated NA channels open, and an action potential is generated. Usually, acetylcholine is hydrolyzed and recycled very quickly by the enzyme acetylcholinerase. However, succinylcholine is not metabolized by this. 
This prevents the repolarization and subsequent depolarization. This is known as a phase 1 block and the muscle membrane becomes unresponsive to further stimulus. When high or prolonged doses of succinmethonium accumulate at the neuromuscular junction, this produces similar effects to a competitor block. This is known as a phase 2 block. After initial depolarization, the membrane potential gradually returns to a resting state, even though the neuromuscular junction is still exposed to the drug. Neurotransmission remains to be blocked throughout. Like acetylcholine, succinmethonium is rapidly metabolized in the blood. The enzyme involved in this process is plasma cholinesterase. Succinmethonium is a short-term muscle relaxant with its main uses in surgical procedures where a rapid onset and a brief duration of a muscle relaxant is needed. It is used as an anesthetic in procedures such as endotracheal incitation and electroconvulsive therapy. Like most drugs, succinmethonium has many side effects associated with it. Some of these are on-target effects which affect the acetylcholine nicotinic receptors, while others are off-target. Succinmethonium apnea is rare. It is an on-target side effect which occurs when the patient is incapable of metabolizing the drug quickly enough. They remain paralyzed and unable to breathe after surgery is complete because they cannot regain their muscle functions quickly enough. The majority of succinmethonium is metabolized by an enzyme in the blood called plasma cholinesterase and about 10% is excreted by the kidneys. Metabolism is normally complete within 5 to 10 minutes. Some patients lack this enzyme or have an altered enzyme that does not metabolize succinmethonium as rapidly. For these patients, phase 2 blocks may develop after a single standard dose. As well as being paralyzed, these patients will experience a pulse rate that is faster and the blood pressure may rise. They may also have sweats and dilated pupils. The gene which encodes plasma cholinesterase is inherited and therefore succinmethonium apnea is usually an inherited condition. The enzyme is synthesized in the liver, therefore a severe liver impairment or malnutrition may cause abnormally low enzyme levels, prolonging the activity of succinmethonium. Pregnancy, hypothyroidism and renal impairment are some of the examples and other reasons why a patient will have low enzyme activity. Another known side effect of succinmethonium is bradycardia. This occurs due to stimulation of the muscarinic receptors at the sinoatrial node. It is therefore an off-target side effect. Bradycardia is more common in children or it may be present in adults after repeat doses of other muscarinic effects of succinmethonium include an increase in salivary, bronchial and gastric secretions. Post-operative muscle pain is one of the most common adverse effects of succinmethonium and it has been noted in about 50% of patients. It usually occurs on the first post-operative day and lasts for two or three days and most often affects the muscles of the neck, shoulders and upper abdomen. The incidence and severity of muscle pain is increased in patients who are mobile soon after surgery and in females. Fasciculation occurs during a phase 1 block, causing muscle contraction in almost all patients given succinmethonium, and it also causes muscle damage. Succinmethonium can cause hyperkalemia. The mechanism behind this is understood as a hypersensitivity of acetylcholine receptors in which the entire muscle fibre membrane becomes directly excitable by depolarizing drugs releasing potassium over the entire muscle fibre membrane. This is considered to be an on-target side effect. It has been shown that succinmethonium causes an increase in intraocular pressure. However, the mechanism for this is not clear and it is thought to be multifactorial. This drug has multiple crimes associated with it, one of them being a hotly argued trial of Dr. Coppolino versus the state. Dr. Coppolino was an anesthesiologist married to a Dr. Carmela Massetto. In 1945, Dr. Massetto, his wife, had died from a suspected heart attack. However, it was later discovered that Dr. Coppolino had injected her with a lethal dose of succinmethonium, paralyzing and asphyxiating her. Dr. Coppolino had a mistress for many years prior to his wife's death. Marjorie Farber was a patient of his for hypnotherapy. One day Marjorie came to Coppolino begging him to help her kill her husband. 
Coslino then provided her with an injection of succinylcholine. In 1963, Marjorie called Coppolino in a fluster, as her husband did not die from the injection she had administered, and she needed additional help to suffocate him and finish the job. Marjorie then went to the police telling them of Coppolino's crimes, as she was distraught when she found that Coppolino was married to another woman after his wife's death. She had said that Coppolino had hypnotised her into murdering her husband. Dr. Milton Helpham, a New York chief examiner, found succinylcholine chloride in both of the murdered bodies. Coppolino was then charged for both homicides and served 10 years of his life sentence. Dr. Umberger and Dr. Helpham, the chief medical examiner of New York at the time, developed a new way to detect succinylcholine in the body. It was this that was used to build evidence in a case against Dr. Coppolino and found him to be guilty of both murders. Without this development, Dr. Coppolino wouldn't have been found guilty. Succinylcholine metabolizes into succinic acid and choline, which are naturally found in the body, making the presence of the drug very difficult to detect and making it the perfect poison.